Hello. In this clip from our Justia webinar, AI and Ethics, Using Artificial Intelligence Responsibly in Legal Practice, James Gatto gives an overview of how AI is being used by lawyers and the ethical obligations you need to consider when using AI for your legal practice. Remember, if you'd like to see more Justia videos on law practice and legal marketing, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you, Dina, for that wonderful introduction. I appreciate it and welcome everybody. I'm glad to be here today and then to talk through these issues with uh, ethical issues with, with AI. Um, Nina went through my background, so I'll skip over this. Um, I think the first thing to kind of understand is that there, you know, there's really no uh, prohibition on using AI in delivering legal services, nor is there an unfettered right to use it without certain safeguards. So in between those two kind of poles, there's a lot of gray area about what you can and cannot do. Um, and that's what we're going to try to sort through today. So the, the first thing I would say is that it's important to think through the different ways in which lawyers may use AI in connection with their day-to-day -day, um, activities. And when you think about it, you can kind of break things down into two very significant major buckets. And then within that, there's a lot of different activities. Um, and so as, as shown on the right of the screen here, uh, there's a lot of different ways in which law firms and individual lawyers are using AI um, in, in what I would call non-delivery of legal services. So firm administration, uh, knowledge management, uh, other you know, kind of internal tools that don't really involve so much rendering legal advice, but it's really more the administrative part uh, and the business part of, of managing law firms and law practices. The one exception may be in connection with marketing if you're using AI for uh, advertise to create advertisements or marketing materials, um, you obviously want to make sure that the you know there's no misstatements or errors that are being introduced. But but subject to that, for the most part, those are I'd say relatively low risk uh, activities, subject to just reviewing, as I mentioned, to make sure for accuracy. So what we're really thinking about when we look at the AI legal issues is kind of really more the bucket here on the left. And there's many different ways. This is not a, a comprehensive list, but there's many different tools that you've probably all encountered, at least some of these, and maybe using some of these to really support actual performance and delivery of legal services by lawyers. So everything from uh, document review and e-discovery, legal research, contract review and analysis, diligence, regulatory review, predictive analytics, and, and drafting of legal documents. These are some of the major categories of things that AI are uh, is enabling uh, to be done more efficiently um, and the areas that I think where the most potential concern exists. So what are these existing obligations? So the important thing to, I think, understand is that in general, the existing ethical rules apply. There are really no new rules that I've seen or very little, I would say, that are um, new ethical rules that specifically address AI. What we've started to see is guidance from different bar associations on how the existing ethical rules apply when you're using AI. Um, and so that's a big part of what we need to understand is, is what that guidance is. And that's a big part of what we'll cover today. But I, I also encourage you that while we're going to have a pretty comprehensive program today, you're going to encounter fact situations that probably are not addressed by my presentation or may not yet have been addressed by some of this bar guidance. So it's important to kind of stay vigilant for different fact scenarios that may go beyond what we talk about today. And part of the reason for that is, well, the ethical obligations are probably well known to to all of you, how they apply to AI can vary based on a number of factors. It, it, it can depend on the tools that are used, the, the way they work may be different from one tool to another, what they do may be different, so the type of, of legal assistance they're providing you, how you use them and the context in which you use them and, and other factors may lead to different uh, considerations. Here's kind of a high level overview of the guidance of which I'm I'm aware. Um, if you look on the left here, you can see that a number of 
state bar associations, uh, California, D.C., Florida, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, uh, and Texas have issued uh, guidance on the applicability of, of the existing bar rules to, um, to, to use of AI. Pennsylvania did joint guidance with the Philadelphia bar, and the New York City bar has uh, also, uh, in addition to New York State bar, the New York City bar has separate guidance as well. Um, beyond the state bar so associations, the the ABA recently came out with guidance on their kind of model uh, ethical rules and and the applicability of AI. And we've seen in some cases, like the United States Patent Office has issued separate guidance for patent practitioners that are practicing before the patent office that use AI on the do's and don'ts unique to the, the PTO rules. On the right side here, um, there's links to some articles I've written that have kind of get, go into a little bit more detail in connection with some of the, the specific bar association guidance that, that's been issued. Um, for today, I'm not going to go through state by state. What I've primarily tried to do is go through the various guidance of which I'm aware and pull out the the kind of the relevant principles. Uh, and you'll, you'll see if you look at them in, in, in any detail that many of the same topics are covered by uh, the different bar associations. Um, and so this is this is kind of more of a kind of an extrapolation of, of the what's kind of across the bar, the guidance um, and try to distill it into just a, a single set of, uh, of principles. Um, there are throughout this presentation will be some reference to some specific state bars where there's some specific language um, that'll be there to help kind of explain in, in greater detail what uh, the bar has said in in some cases. Um, so here's a, a list of some of the I would say kind of the the main topics um, from the various guidance that we're going to cover today, and we'll we'll go through these in in uh, in some detail. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy it, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos on law practice and legal marketing. See you in our next clip. Thank you.